my name is Judy Parmenter. I'm going to say a few words about John Howland, who was one of the uh, passengers on the Mayflower that sailed out on, in 1620. I'm descended through nine generations from John Howland, along with probably about several million other people in America and elsewhere. John Howland was noted on the manifest as a manservant or possibly steward to John Carver, who was, also, who was then described as a merchant and the leader of the expedition. John Carver did not survive the first winter. John Howland apparently came from Fen Stanton in Huntingdonshire, and eventually he married Elizabeth Tilly, who was the daughter of John Tilly, a silk merchant, who also died in that first winter, along with nearly half of the other passengers. Many of the pioneers did not have pioneering skills. Silk merchants and merchants did not lend themselves naturally to being pioneers. However, John and Elizabeth had 10 children, so they were obviously good at something. John's main early claim to fame was that he fell overboard during the voyage in rough seas. Since the sailing took place between November, uh, between September and November, it's hardly surprising that it was a fairly rough passage. His incident is described by William Bradford, another of the pilgrims, as follows. A strong young man called John Howland, coming on deck, was thrown into the sea, but it pleased God that he caught hold of the topsail halyards which hung overboard and ran out at length. But he kept hold, though he was several fathoms, fathoms under water, till he was hauled up by the rope and then with the boat hook helped into the ship and saved. And though he was somewhat ill from it, he lived many years and became a profitable member both of the church and the commonwealth. John seems to have inherited John Carver's estate as the Carvers had no children. As early as 1633, he was a member of, of the governor's council and from 1641 to 1670 was often a deputy or representative to the general court. In 1634, he com commanded the Pilgrim's Trading Post at Kennebec. He died in 1672 when over 80 years of age, which was fairly good going for that time anyway, but particularly in those circumstances. He became a prominent member of the community and signatory to several important documents, such as the Mayflower Compact in 1620 and that for trade in beaver skins in 1641. There are portraits of him, so he may have been quite important uh, because you don't get your portrait painted unless you've got some, some clout. My branch of the family became empire loyalists at the time of the American War of Independence and moved to Canada. My mother was Canadian and lived in New Brunswick. Our family is descended from Hope Howland, who was John's second daughter and third child. And Hope had 12 children, so it obviously ran in the family. My mother was also one of eight. I did not follow in that tradition. There are many famous descendants of John Howland, including Franklin D. Roosevelt, George Bush, Humphrey Bogart, H.W. Longfellow, uh, Christopher Lloyd, Anthony Perkins, Alec Baldwin, um, and also Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford are descended from Arthur Howland, who was John's brother and obviously followed him out to the New World. And Winston Churchill was, descend is descended, was descended from Henry, another brother. So we've got some famous relations. I'm afraid it didn't rub off on my side of the family. <laughs> if anybody would like to ask any questions about John Howland, I would do my best to answer. Uh, I don't guarantee to have any answers because of course it was a long time ago. And most of what I know you've just heard. Thank you.